There's a lot going on in the diamond industry today that I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna let you in on a little bit of a couple of secrets. I got about two million dollars worth of diamonds here. And the way the diamond game works, everyone plays a little head game, right? You're buying an engagement ring. What do you know? How do they guide you? How do they gain your trust? How can they maximize their your profit, diminish your cost? I'm gonna try to break that down and explain it. But if you really wanna make a beautiful engagement ring, you could really play with the cuts. Now, one of my favorites, and this kind of looks like an ice cube, is something like this, right? And this has a lot of brilliance, right? We're gonna compare it to other cuts in a little bit, but you can see even what it's doing with the camera. It has a lot of brilliance. This is, of course, a cushion cut. Now, cushion cut can be squarish, uh, it could be rectangular, right? There's a lot of different variations on the cushion cut, like for instance, these two. You can make two different types of extraordinary engagement rings out of something like this. Then, of course, you can add princess cut in there. Now, as far as the clarity and the quality and the GIA cert, so if you really want concrete information and strict data on your pieces, whenever you have an off stone and you're saving some money, I've been down that road, not the best thing to do. You're gonna unfortunately have to pony up for the GIA cert, unless I'm gonna show you something down the road uh, uh, in a little bit. One of my favorites, cushion. Not a lot of people use this for engagement rings as a princess. Cushion is a beautiful way. Now, however, we have these emerald cuts right here. If you want to do an, a, a really exotic, extraordinary engagement ring, you want to pick between these two, All right? I would suggest to get yourself, I like the cushion, but the emerald cut, it's a matter of choice. And then of course you have the oval. Let's put the oval in the mix. And then we're going to talk about the diamond secrets that uh, you should be aware of. Oval, princess, emerald monster sized stones what kind of clarities what kind of qualities do you want well this is the way it is you know they tell you the c's and the this and the that you want to have a bare minimum of si2 right if you're going to get an si2 that means you're getting a bigger carrot weight right you could get an si1 let's say you're buying a two carat stone you could get an si1 in two carat i really prefer an si1 but the bare minimum is the si2 right you could get an si1 you know, in um, uh, two carats, or you can get SI2 and a 2.3 carat. So you really balance one over the other. What do you want to do? You want a bigger look, or do you want more brilliance in a smaller stone? Then you have the cut. The least of the cut you want is very good. A lot of people want excellent, 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 and that's really good if you, because that, that helps the symmetry of the stone and get it the maximum brilliance. But you could trade off, right? You lower one lever, you know what I'm saying? You're going to put this on the very good because you want a little bit more carat. You want to um, uh, lower the quality a little bit so you can have a better color. The thing that you want to notice with these three stones is that color is everywhere, while clarity is, you know, microscopic. So you want to have at least a J color. That is the bare minimum, right? You're, the lowest, right? If you have an SI2 and it's a J color, that means that your carat weight should be very, very high. Right, you traded everything off. You said, you know what, I want the biggest stone, so uh, I'm gonna have a very good cut, SI2, J color, and you're gonna have a monster rock per dollar. Right, but if you really, what, uh, you know, a guy like me, I couldn't go lower than a VS2 and a G color on any stone that I have to do for a personal project for me or that, but some people, you know, they're not gonna be competing with VVS stones, they wanted the bigger look. That all depends on you. Trade what you'd wanna trade off for what? Different carrots, different sizes. And then, of course, the brilliant right here of a large selection and a tray of brilliance stones. And you have something along the lines for a pair to get this matched up properly. These are amazing. Now, as far as a match is concerned, I'm not too thrilled about it as a match, to be honest. This one looks a little bit bigger and the color is a little bit off. And this one is, uh, is a better clarity, better color, is a little bit smaller. I'm not too sure about its cut. So they were, they were in, the, in the tray, but you know, they should be matching, but I think you could get a better match. When you're buying something, you're buying studs, you're buying this, you're buying that, you really gotta know what the hell you're doing, and you really gotta, uh, you know, work with somebody that uh, explains all the details to you in a way that, that you could respect. Because I could also tell you a hundred different things and then confuse the hell out of you in a purchasing experience. Some people like that, I don't. You know, that's not something for me. Then you have something that's really tricky. Bear in mind, what I'm about to say is extremely important. These two stones right here would be a quarter of a million dollars right here, except they are not natural diamonds, all right? These are grown uh, uh, diamonds. Now, people don't understand a grown diamond or what 
Diamonds are a crystal, carbon crystal, okay? And uh, you could grow it nowadays, right? You don't have to dig in the earth, right? How did the diamonds form in the earth? Carbon gets down there, coal gets down there, lots of heat, lots of pressure, crystallizes it into a diamond. It takes extraordinary pressure, extraordinary heat. Now we have the technology to do that and you could grow this. So you can have these, but that doesn't mean these are free. This can be worth uh, a quarter million dollars natural or $60,000 uh, on the market uh, uh, the way it is now in CBD. And there is no way to tell other than the CBD machine. That's why we keep it here. This is a new sophisticated machine. Very important to, to do this. I mean, it, this wouldn't be necessary in the diamond industry. We're gonna put one in there for now. I'm gonna run the test. Okay, focus it on the stone. Diamond. Okay, well, this is what you're gonna see when it's a CBD. You're gonna see a bunch of red. Let's throw that natural stone in there so you guys can see the difference. Why it does that in the, in the CBD machine? What it detects? The gases that are trapped inside the stone? Do that, does that make a visual difference in any way, shape, or form? Not really, but you know, I'm starting to see a difference when I look at them, okay? One of these is natural, the other is man-made. There's a lot of brilliance here. There's a lot of brilliance on the other one. There's a little bit more brilliance on the, on the natural. I don't quite know exactly why, because not all CBDs are the same, right? But let's put this into the machine real quick. You got the unnatural and the natural in the same machine. All right, so still, you know, you're talking about 60,000 for the pair. That's 30,000 a piece for the unnatural. And you're talking about over $100,000 for the natural. You got to figure out what's right for you. I mean, you know, the, when there's an option of a quarter of the price or what have you, that is an option a lot of people want to take. Is there a visual difference? Slightly. There, there does seem to be a visual difference. But is there a difference that you could see here? Well, look for yourself. Natural, unnatural. What is, what is going on that it turns this thing red? Well, that has to be something that's in the stone and does it have a visual effect i don't know but nonetheless it is a great option for people on a budget right there's no reason to get an i1k color when you could get a a, a, a man-made stone that i would personally recommend if you want a nice big stone you know right in a certain budget you could go with a synthetic stone you could spend six thousand dollars on a natural and it'll be a certain size you could spend that six thousand dollars on an unnatural and you could get something way bigger way better right and that's pretty much the basic diamond education of what's going on over here, right? We put our natural stones back. One more time to look at these synthetics right here. Or man-mades. If you want an engagement ring, you want to come on down to Tracks MIC, we'll definitely help you out. We've got access to the best stones in the diamond district, and we're going to give you the right price and the right information. But these guys right here are amazing. There's still a lot more to learn about CBD and so on and so forth. But this is uh, just a start.